Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. We have this 450XH here split open, and you're probably wondering what we're doing. Well, we're going to show you in this video how to remove, if you want to replace the, uh, the cutting motor, how to remove it and then replace it. So we're going to show you how you take that out. And while we have that out, we're going to show you the cutting height adjustment mechanism here and how you remove that but more importantly, how you put that back in the correct way and some of the things that go on with the cutting height adjustment there that can give you uh, some errors that uh, people just don't understand. So we're going to start by disassembling everything on the bottom here. We already took the top off because anytime you go to remove the cutting motor, completely remove it, you have to get in here because you have to unplug the wiring harness from the main board. So now we have all that off we're going to flip it over because on the bottom side you know we still got to take off our all of our stuff here our uh, our cutting disc and all that so we're gonna head, go ahead and do that all right we were just going to skip ahead but we're going to show you here how to do this just so we have a, a good refresher so uh you'll know how to do this from start to finish if you go to replace a cutting motor and that stuff up in here we have a video showing how to replace the bellow which is this rubber accordion style seal. And that'll show you how to remove all this stuff as well and put it back on. But we'll just go ahead and do it. Just so you can see what we're getting into here and how much of a project this is the whole way through. So there we have our, we have our bearing cover. We have that off. We have our cutting disc shield. We have that off. And you can see it's all shiny on this side. Nasty on this side. So when you go to put that back together, maybe flip that upside down. It's your call. So now we need a we need our Allen wrench here. I believe that's a four millimeter. And we gotta take out this socket head cap screw here, or the socket head screw here that holds this bearing assembly in place. So we take that out and the bearing assembly a lot of times it'll just pull right off like that uh, look at that we had some stuff stashed up in there that's what gives you that cutting system block there that's getting down in the bearings um while you have that apart you might want to spin that see if you hear any growling coming from those bearings if you do then it's time to replace that assembly while you have this all apart you can see at this one see it's how it's all brown in there and dirty in there. It obviously got a bunch of water up in there. So if you have that off and everything out of there, then you've got three Torx head screws here. You got to take those out. These are actually screwed into the flange on the cutting motor. It's also a good time when you go to put this back together to change your blades. You can see the ones on this are pretty rusted and hammered up. That's it for your cutting disc. There you go. It's off. You can see this one must have got bunch of water up in there too and you can see it has more stuff wrapped in around the cutting motor here yay so now to get the cutting motor out you're in the home stretch if you just want to remove it you got four torx head screws one two three four to remove that out of there so what we'll do is we'll flip this down before we do that and uh we'll unplug our cutting motor all the wires back through here and just unplug that from our main board there we go so we got our our wires are free flip this over <clears throat> We got our, our four screws there yet to take out. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, 
Okay, so we got our screws out. Now this can just be pulled right out of here. You might have to wiggle a little bit if it's gunked up like this. Break it free. But that's it. Just like in um, Iron Man, when he was removing that thing in his chest, pull it on out, bring the cord with it. <laughs> that's it right there. That's your cutting motor. That gets replaced all as one assembly. Pretty simple and easy to do. So while you have that out, we always recommend that you definitely clean up this bellow. As you can see, this is just, this one here has got all kinds of stuff on it, and it's crunched up. So the way you do this is you pull out on it. It's going to come down from away, away from this cup. <clears throat> like that. And when you pull out on it a little bit there, you'll be able to get in underneath here, and it just tucks into this lip on the lower chassis. So that's all you got to do to remove that. Get that thing nice and cleaned up and if it's been if you're at the three if, it, if it's at the three year mark if it's been three years your motor's been out there mowing Husqvarna actually suggests you replace that again we made a video showing how to replace that but now you're seeing the whole process here of how to go through this and replace that and a whole lot more all right so we got everything out of the way there we're going to flip this over and now we're going to show you the cutting height adjustment system and what's involved with uh, removing that and reassembling that in there to get it to actually work. All right, so this is our cutting height adjustment system here. It consists of this plastic cup piece here that the motor attaches to and sticks up through. <clears throat> and then you have this part back here with your slide and your adjustments in it. And uh, here you got the electric motor that turns everything to make it go up and down. So the very first thing you want to do when you go to try to remove this is you want to unplug these wires over here. And there's a circuit board down here. There's one little black plastic uh, holder here for the circuit board. T20 Torx bit screw. You want to take that out. And then you want to slide this board out of the way. You always want to make sure to do that first because you want to make sure this is out of the way or you're going to end up damaging that board. So always start with that. That way you're safe. You know, you're not going to cause any harm to that and you're good to go. So we got our, our wires out of the way. Now we'll go up here to the front. We'll take these out. I mean, honestly, they don't have to come out, but it makes it a little bit easier. These just are, um, they're just some spring pieces that kind of push against this cup to help keep it from flopping around too much. We'll get them out of there just to show you. So now here comes the fun part. This is the part that people have a, a lot of problems with. This is spring loaded. Now if you go to take this out of here, you know, it, it's going to have some pressure on it. It's not going to be like a coil spring on a car or anything like that, you know. But it does have some tension on it. So what you want to do is you want to go around here and you want to take all these screws out before you let this thing come up. So what we do is we take one out completely. And then we take one out diagonally from the first one we took out. So now we have the two of them out. Now we're going to hold down on this and we're going to take out the screw here and the screw back here. So we'll start with this one. As we hold down on this, we'll take that out a little ways and back over here to this one. Take it up a little ways and there you go. You can see that whole thing just popped up there. So we have the pressure off of it. We're free to take our screws out of here the rest of the way. And there we go. There's the entire assembly. Okay, we have our cutting height adjustment assembly here. And we're going to start by showing you this down here in the back. When you have this down in the mower's chassis, this is kind of hidden. But this is the gear on the bottom of the electric motor. So this gear turns this gear, obviously. And when it turns this, this screw piece here, that's what causes this to raise and lower. I, mean, I can't really do it right now because it's not 
it's not positioned right but we're going to take this out and to do that we're just going to slide down on this a little bit and you can see that this whole assembly comes out so you have this this screw piece right here and then you have it pushing against or turning against this threaded piece right here on the back of your your cup that your electric motor sits in so this matches up with that and that's what that's what raises and lowers everything. As this turns, then this moves accordingly. It slides this up and down on these, these aluminum sliders over here. So now this piece right here, it has a spring on the back of it, and that's what helps it keep tension on this piece so that it's harder for it to jam up or bind. You know, if it has that tension on there, it's going to keep pretty consistent pressure and keep anything from from jumping her now this part right up here this is replaceable that spring is replaceable one thing we see every now and then is up here in these on the, on this cup you can see this part right down here where this sits in and that pivots there's times where we've seen these wear out and he, these uh these areas for the ears on this to pivot get really egged out so this can get kind of crossed up in there and it'll it'll jam up so that's that part of it there then we got this part like what I was telling you about this comes apart now you usually get this all in this assembly here but this can come apart you can see that that spring is in there that's where that spring pressure comes from I was telling you about when taking it out of the chassis but you can you can see that that'll push up and down in there and this actually will pop out of there if you if you hold it down and you squeeze in this tab and this tab that will come apart that spring will come out of there this whole thing will come out of there and every now and then somebody will take it out apart or it falls apart on them and they struggle with getting that back together i don't recommend that you take this apart if you don't have to you know, there unless this is completely worn somewhere in the, the threads, there's really no reason to take this apart. That's it right there. That's your three main components. This cup piece, the screw, and then your, your support here with your electric motor on it. Now, the big thing is when you go to put this back together, <clears throat> this is where people get kind of crossed up and they jam stuff up. So you're going to want to start by getting your... Your screw piece started in here. It's going to go on to, on to this part right there. It's got a hole in it. It's going to fit right in there. Kind of hard to do this while you're trying to get the camera to be able to see it. And then you're going to take your cup and you're going to get it started on the tracks. Just like that. So you're going to match these match these three or these yeah these two pieces here with the threads on them you're going to match them up and you've got everything going into the third piece right here all at the same time simple as that so when you slide that in there your gears are going to line right up if they don't you can just twist that a little bit but there you go you've got your your spring pressure on this piece you've got your screw in there and everything is good to go as far as assembling it out of the mower you can see the spring down in there make sure you didn't lose that so that's it for that part all right you're going to go to put your cutting height adjustment system in here before you do that we have to point out a few things to make sure that you know of before you go trying to jam this down in there number one make sure that your your plastic cup here sits down in these aluminum sliders further than the edge of the slider you don't want this to be you don't want the plastic from this thing to be hanging out there like that. You want it to be down in. You want it to be up in there like that. But you want to still make sure your gears are lined up and everything's good to go. So you got that into position there. That's good. When you go to put this down on there, this, this T-shaped hole right here, obviously has to go over this tab right here. That's a T-shaped tab sticking up out. So that's got to line up right. This right here, this part on this uh, this flange right here on your screw piece, 
goes inside of here, right inside that circle on your lower chassis. The other thing is, I'll show you here, the circuit board we told you to, to take out first uh, for your cutting height adjustment. These tabs that stick out on here, this board, when it slid in, these, these two sensors here on this board, go, but they go on either side of these tabs on this disc. So every time these go around there, it's going to measure the, the adjustment of the cutting height. It's going to sense that. So if you'd have left this in there and then tried to pull up on this or it sprung out, you would have just twisted those sensors all up and it wouldn't have worked right. So that's why we had to take that out of there first. So you got everything together. You got this in the right position, like I was telling you. You're ready to sit everything down in there. And you're going to sit it down in there, make sure everything's lined up. Now, you want to make sure to push down on this evenly. Give it a little bit of a wiggle. If you push it down and it's not lining up quite right, or you feel it just jam and get rock solid right away, it's wrong. That's where everybody messes up at. They try to put it in there and put a screw in quick and then go around and put another screw in. Well, in that time, the spring pressure has caused this to bind up. So you want to feel that, be able to move up and down on that spring in there. And then you want to have it just gently push it down to where the black piece here, where you're going to put your screws in, you can see that it's against the top of the hole for each of those screws on the lower chassis. So you got that pushed down and even. Then you start out with uh, with one screw. Grab one here. Again, we always recommend that you turn these backwards till you feel them pop into place, so that way you don't strip anything out. So there we have that one popped into place. We'll put that in. We're not going to snug that down the whole way. We're going to take it down to where it's just just about to touch that black plastic piece. And then we're going to put another one in over here. Diagonal from the first one we put in. And now we'll take this one down and we will snug that one down. Not, not tight the whole way. And we'll come back to our first one. We'll snug it down, making sure it's not completely tight. Because we still want a little bit of wiggle room. We still want to be able to move this just a little bit. I'm actually going to loosen this one up just a little bit. Because we want to be able to twist this a little bit, if need be, to be able to get our other holes to line up. If you just hoss them down right away, this could be off enough where it's going to cause the next couple screws you put in to be off and chew the threads up in there. So you want that wiggle room, but you know you've got everything lined up because you you felt that, that nice easy spring down on there. So there we go. Put that one in to where it's just barely touching the plastic. Get this one in there. Now that one there will tighten down the whole way. We'll come back, crisscross back over, tighten that one down. And there we go. That's how you replace your cutting height adjustment, the whole mechanism, and get it to work properly when you go to put everything back together and try it out. So now we got that in there. We'll put these spring tabs in there, back in the front. Now you don't have to worry about having this cup at either, you know, maxed out the whole way up or the whole way down. It'll, it'll know where it's at. It'll calibrate and it'll know what's going on there. There we go. All done with that. Everything is mounted in and good to go. Now we're going to take our cutting height adjustment circuit board, white part up with the plug, and we're going to slide it in there. 
and there's actually an indent right there in the lower chassis so you'll know that that's where that board goes and then put the holder back on it Plug your wires in. Oops, we'll plug the yellow one in here first because it's on the inside. And there you go. We just replaced our cutting height adjustment system here. We got the entire mechanism into place. It's ready to go. It's going to work properly when we put it back together. So now you know that's a secret. If you have a, an issue with your, your cutting height adjustment being blocked, if you had it apart, it's something not seated back down improperly. If you never had it apart, then it could be just that there's um, those little ears right there that we showed you where that flap pivots at that they're wearing out. Now we just got to put our cutting motor back up in here and finish piecing everything else together on the outside. All right, time to put everything back together on the outside of our mower. We have to put our bellow on there. And we're going to start with a fresh brand new one. You have a large diameter on one side, a uh, smaller diameter on the other side. The side of the larger, the larger hole has a, a pretty thick lip on it. And that's what's going to sit down inside the lip here on your lower chassis. So you're just going to put that down over it. <clears throat> get that the whole way down there. And just pull out on it. And let it slide back in underneath there into that lip on the lower chassis once you get worked the whole way around there you'll know that it's it's in place i mean you'll be able to tell when you're done you can actually look in there and actually see it too so that's going to sit right in there there we go that's in place now the uh the what would be the top side here would be the bottom of the mower is flipped over you're gonna get that up on this lip right here on this cup for your your cutting motor adjuster so since the bottom part is locked into the chassis you can just pull up on this until you get that freed up enough to be able to raise it up there on the edge of the cup just like that so that's what you want to do you want to have that on there like that then your electric cutting motor you have you have these fingers right here which will be facing towards the back when you put it in it's going to sit down in like this but on the side it goes against uh against this height adjustment cup right here the the cup that the motor sits in you have you have two little nipples sticking up on the flange here the mounting flange for the electric motor one there and one there they go into these holes right here you have your four holes on the outside where the screws go in to mount this but these other ones go here to line everything up so you're going to fish your wires back through there and you're going to put that into place with your your bellow up there so it can be locked in as well and you'll know when you got that in place because it'll just sit tight in there so then we're going to put our four screws in. Again, turn them backwards till they snap into place. And if you're not tighten them all down, you know, individually, you want to go through and get them all in. You want to get all of them in before you start to tighten them down. So that way you don't screw up the threads in the, uh, the plastic housing. Last one. There we go. Get that in there. Tighten that down. Crisscross. Tighten the rest of them down. And we got one more to go. So 
So now our bellow is locked in the, the lip on there on the lower chassis and it's locked in here under this flange. So that's going to be a good watertight seal around there and that thing is good to go. Now normally we clean these up a lot more if we're putting the old one back in. We're uh, kind of in a hurry here to get done with this. Uh, get done with this video, so we're just putting this one back in here just to show you how it goes back together. This is actually going to get a new one because it's all caked full of stuff in here. But onward and upward, we got the cutting disc next. Again, you got the three little nipples sticking on here. You got three extra holes right here on this flange. You got the three of the threads in them, and then the three extra ones that's where these will go to line this up. So it's going to fall right into place. Start your screws. Just one at a time before you go tighten them down in. You don't want to tighten these down right away. You want to get them all in there just to be safe. The better you get everything centered up and lined up on these when it comes to the cutting disc especially, the less likely you are to get those imbalanced cutting disc errors. You know, if your cutting disc, if the, this whole assembly here is spinning around it's already cattywampus because you you put the screws in crooked and you didn't get anything lined up quite right then it's not going to take much more to cause your uh your errors to start popping up so after we get them in there we get all the all the screws lined up with the countersunk holes we're good to go there bearing assembly next this side here is going to go down in, the side with the three nipples sticking up. That's going to go out so that your um, cutting disc shield will sit into them. We got our screw here that takes the Allen wrench. Remember, four millimeter Allen wrench to get this in there. Make sure that's good and tight. Next is our cutting disc shield. Gonna line that up. There we go. Then our bearing cap. That's going to sit on there. And it's going to latch into place too. This is another one. You can see that that's got those, those little nipples sticking up there that go into this that index it. But you can see you've got a lot of wiggle right there. You could have those, hol those holes off a little bit. So that's why you want to start the screws one at a time before you go tightening them down. And again, you're going into plastic, so spin it backwards, let it pop into place. Get one started there. That one might be a little messed up. Yep, there we go. It's, it's still all right. And the third one. All right, third one started down in there. Now we can go ahead and we'll tighten these down. Again, no power tools. You want to do all this with uh, you know screwdrivers, hand tools, so you can feel what's going on there. You don't want to just rip those screws into the plastic and chew your threads all up. But that's it right there. Everything's all together and good to go here on the outside. Now we just got to flip it over. Whenever you do this procedure, you want to make sure to replace your, your chassis seal. Anytime you split the metal ramp, you should be replacing that chassis seal. So we have them available. We'll get to that in a minute here. But uh, wiring harness for your cutting motor. It's going to go back into the main board here. There's only one spot where it can plug in because of the, the way the plug's designed, the size of it. So you plug that in, and you're going to sit this back down into your, your uh, wiring harness holders here, and you're done. That's it. That's how you replace that entire cutting motor, um, the cutting motor height adjustment, all that stuff, all there in one shot, showing you how to do the entire thing from, from start to finish. So any of these parts, as always, uh, that you would need, Go to www.roboticmowerservices.com. That ceiling strip we were talking about, we got them too. We, we like to put reminders on there for a lot of the parts that 
uh, the, the common repairs we know people are doing. If you look in the parts descriptions, we say, hey, if you're doing this, order one of these too. I know we have that on there for wheel motors and we have that on there for several other parts that we sell a lot of. So yeah, any of your parts, www.roboticmowerservices.com. If you don't see what you're looking for on there, send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. If you got some questions, if you're looking for some technical support, uh, you need some help with something, send us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. There's a spot also on our website. You can go to contact us. You can send us a message through there. Uh, you can submit pictures through there if you got some issues that you need some help with. And we, we need a little bit of clarification. So plenty of ways to reach out to us for whatever you're looking for with your auto mower. Uh, that's going to do it for this video here. As always, we thank you for your support. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. And thanks for watching.